Hi everybody, I'm Christian. Welcome to Pico 8. Welcome to well, welcome to Lazy Devs. Welcome to Pico 8 Hero. Um, so today we are we're still working our roguelike. And then we already have our, our mob system set up, so we have characters. We can bump into them. We can start attacking them. And so today we are going to be like fleshing out the system a little bit. I don't know how far we're going to get today, but um, because you know that's we're opening a huge can of worms right now. Um, let me look at this update. So I mm, at this uh, at this function here. So something I don't like about here about this function here is like there's a lot of stuff that we're dealing here with that is really about animations and not so much about um, gameplay. And there's a bunch of stuff here that's kind of like really making this this function very really difficult to read. And this function is already a bit convoluted, I have to say. So I want to like get some of the stuff out here. So I want to create like a function. So there's basically basically two things that are animation related here. One is creating an animation where the character walks to a destination, um, and the other uh, is creating an animation where the character bumps against something. These are like two things that have to be and two animations that have to be set up properly. So let's just like create some functions that take care of all this stuff. Um, so we have like this mobs tab and uh, I realize that this is probably, probably a good, good place to put some of the animations that we had previously. So for example, also like the move bump and move walk. Yeah, let's put them there because now they are parts of the mob system. Um, so like here, so we we'll put them in here, move walk and move bump. And then we're gonna also get a function that will just start the corresponding animation. That's gonna be uh, mob walk. Um, that mob walk will re require the mob um, and uh, it will require dx and dy. This kind of like the you know the um, dx and dy that we are familiar with from the game update function already. And the other one is gonna be mob bump. That's my thinking. So here, um, where we, this is gonna be, if this is um, walkable, then we're gonna actually walk. And then here is, we're gonna go like mob walk uh, p mob. Oh, so many <laughs> p mob uh, dx dy. I'm not sure if we're gonna copy this. I'm not sure. We might, let's try it. So it's kind of also changing gameplay to some extent. Hmm. Okay. Now this is unusual. We're gonna grab this out. Uh, this is gonna be the animation timer. That's something we're gonna keep it out because um, this mob walk function is something I wanna use for the enemies as well. And they will have maybe a different timer happening. So I'm I, mm, I'm not sure. I, I just I just took, took it out for now. I'm not sure how I'm gonna deal with a timer. I have to think about this. Um, but here for now, let's rewrite this animation so it doesn't work with pmob, but with any kind of mob. So mob x, mob x, dx, dx and dy stays. This is being replaced. This is being replaced. And this. Um, this is also something that we has, have to pull out. Again, these are kind of also um, animation um, related. So this is the timer for the animation. And this is actually setting the update function to perform the animation. Um, but yeah, we cannot, uh, if we want to reuse this function for the enemies, we actually have to pull this out of this function. But this stays in here as well. Okay, so, so far so good. We're gonna actually now take um, this part <laughs> and we're gonna also change it. So we're gonna go mop, mop, mop bump is the, is the name of this animation. So it's like not walkable mop bump. <clears throat> uh, also P mop. And then we're gonna grab all of this. We're gonna just copy it for now. So, so it's not destructive that what we're doing here and paste it in here. So we kind of like just put it out. And again, this is a function we can later on use for the monsters to be also animated in the same fashion um, in which our, our character is actually animated. Uh, nope, that's that's wrong. These are all both gone. Pmob is mobbub. Cool. 
Now, this is something I'm not really sure about. Um, if we actually this if this mob warp animation should actually affect gameplay, the actual position of the character. Um, but that might be a good idea. It's kind of like again, we are kind of like putting responsibilities maybe in functions that one shouldn't really have those responsibilities. I'm, I put the, the comment down because I'm not really sure if that's that's really such a great idea. But I'm gonna figure this out. Things are working. Um, later on, we by the way, we were later on we might have actually two different bumps. Um, that's something I had in my prototype for sure. Where it's, there's like a big bump where you're actually interacting with something. And there's a small bump where it's like, okay, it's just a wall. And it's kind of like this little, okay, there, you know, you cannot co uh, continue further there. Um, and yeah, that's, the, but that's something that we will come later when we talk about, you know, actually fleshing out the gameplay. Um, so far, that's kind of like a preliminary wise, this is kind of a good situation. Oh, by the way, this part here as well. I don't, still don't know what to do with this. Technically, this should go in here in the mob walk and mob bump. Maybe this should go. Yeah, let's get it out and give it its own function. Um, something like this. So here, when we're bumping and flipping, we can actually use the same function here um, to flip them up, left and right. Let's see if this works. It works. Still works. Still haven't done the, the combat yet, so that's something that comes now. So let me think about this. How did I do, do it last time around? Okay. So um, I already talked about how we have like a beast cherry, basically how we kind of have like a library of, you know, what stats different mobs have. And so far this library is like very, very simple. It just has like the animation of the mob because we were very focused on making something appear on the screen. But now um, I think we should add at least two, two values. One is going to be mob.atk. That's going to be the attack power of the mob. How many, how much damage it does. And the other one is going to be at HP. So our player should have HP 5 and should start with attack power of 1. And the slime should also have the power of 1, but it only has 1 HP. So we can like kill it in one blow. Um, there's here's maybe a, a short moment for, uh, for me to do like a small speech again, where I will talk a little bit about um, how combat works in this game. I have strong feelings about RPG combat and I was actually considering maybe doing like a bit of an essay, like a, like a game design corner kind of thing. Maybe some writes actually some thoughts down, organize them a little bit. Um, because I think the way RPG combat works in most games is bad. Uh, or at least it's not really well thought out. I think most RPGs, a lot of RPGs, and this includes um, roguelikes as well, uh, are blindly copying um, combat systems from pen and paper RPGs that use dice. Um, and those paper and pen and paper RPGs, uh, they use dice for very certain reasons that not do not necessarily apply to um, to to computer RPGs. The, the random number stuff in computer RPGs is not the same as throwing dice with your friends. And so uh, something gets lost in the translation and um, just blindly adopting those systems has very negative consequences of what the game is and how it feels and how you think about the game. Um, so, and again, I think this is generally like a thing where game designers just like copy the system because that's the way RPGs work. They don't actually think about how you can actually make combat work in a game. They're just like, I guess we have to roll initiative and then we have to roll the attack value and then there's a defense value and then we subtract them from each other and then we roll how much damage we do. So everything is like, <laughs> everything is tied to a random number generator. So everything is a dice throw somewhere. And that leads to this problem where combat is like, what you do in a game is generally like incredibly unpredictable. You, 
attack a monster and you don't know exactly how much damage you will do. You will do some down amount of damage. So it's less about thinking what will happen, less about planning ahead, being like, okay, I will, uh, I need at least two attacks to kill him or something like this, and then I'm gonna attack this guy. How many attacks? You know, less about strategic planning, and more about um, like a slot machine. Like I'm just, <laughs> just gonna keep <laughs> keep bashing him. Right? Like I'm just gonna keep attacking until he's dead. And not really think about, you know, what I'm actually doing here. It kind of like encourages like this very mindless kind of like grindy kind of uh, play style. Which, you know, sometimes might be this thing that you would be going for. But um, I think uh, you should, as a game designer, you should really think about actually what kind of game are we actually doing here? What is the thing that our player should be doing here? In my case, and I think in a lot of roguelikes, you actually... Oh, sorry, sorry about that. We actually want to encourage players to think about what they're doing. We don't want players to blindly bash monsters. We don't. We want them to actually step back and be like, is this something I can actually survive? Is this something like, what is my, my game plan? What is my attack plan here? And so that, I think, clashes a lot of times with rolling dice. And I think if you play a lot of like modern board games, you will realize that a lot of modern board games actually do not use rolling dice. There's maybe a different analogy that we can use here where you might be know we, there's a good game that is all about planning and really having like all the information and really making those really crazy strategic plans is something like chess. And chess doesn't really have any, any, any random number generation, yet it's incredibly unpredictable. So, and there's actually in the history of chess, there has been chess variants where you would be flipping coins or like throwing dice before when you attack, when the, when the pieces attack each other. And usually, generally what it leads to is people not no longer think about their stuff because, you know, the possibilities are endless. And it's kind of like, don't really like, okay, I might hit that piece, but I might also get lucky. I might do a stupid move, but also get lucky in the, in the process and win the game anyway. Or I might do a really good move but get very unlucky and lose. Uh, so, you you know, it kind of like sabotages all your planning skills and makes you play in a very reactive fashion. This is my speech and there's more to it. I have more. I have, there's something bubbling in me inside. Um, but in this kind of game, um, I'm going to follow the following um, strategy. There is going to be, I'm going to use um, dice throwing once. I'm going to use a random number generator once for the defense in certain cases, uh, but only for the player's defense. And generally, you will always do a predictable amount of damage. If you attack a monster, you will do X amount of damage. In this case, you know, you just want to attack the monster um, and subtract. Um, so you, in this case, in, a, in case of a slime, you just want to attack the slime once and then the slime will die. We will see there's a cool trick I will use or like a little detail here, gameplay reason, how I will um, um, make the combat still interesting and unpredictable and difficult. There's going to be like a still skill component a little bit or strategic component to gameplay. So that sometimes, even though you just have to hit the slime once, the slot, the the slime will have an opportunity, opportunity to hit you before you hit them, and so that's how we're gonna make the combat interesting. But otherwise, the actual combat, the actual damage that you deal, is gonna be generally very predictable. Uh, and again, there's gonna be some random gen number generation, but the, we, when we gonna cross that bridge, when we gonna cross that bridge? Um, okay, again, long speech here, but okay, we just create two stats, attack and HP, and for now that's enough. And we're gonna talk about the defense later on. Um, right, so when we create the mobs, we now have to actually grab those inform this information and put it in our mob uh, in our, my, our mob object. So here we're gonna go at H HP equals, we're always gonna spawn a mob with full HP, right? So we're gonna go mob HP, square brackets, type. And um, we not, we not, don't just have HP, but also max HP. Uh, let's call it HP max. So it's like starts with the same, uh, with the same letters, HP and HP max. And we're gonna, so I wonder what cost more tokens, this or, oh, I cannot actually reference the same object because I'm just creating it. Okay, so I, I guess we have to keep it like this. And then ATK, that's gonna be attack value. Uh, and that's, that's something that we're gonna grab from the table as well. Mop ATK. 
So for now, we're going to do like a very simple um, combat uh, function. Um, we later it's going to be a bit more complicated, but it's not going to it's not going to be too complicated. It's not the most crazy function to be doing here, right? It's going to be just like a simple okay, um, ATK uh, def m the def defending mob dot hp minus equals um, ATK m dot ATK. We just re remove from from uh, from the HPs of the defender how many uh, how much attack power the attacker has, and then we're gonna check if the if the mob is dead. So if defm HP uh, equals zero or is smaller or equals zero, then here we actually the player might go game over. So we have to actually what if uh, def is player um, but for now we could, the, the mobs are not attacking us so we don't have to deal with this situation yet um, and so if the HP is, is down so if the defending um, defending mob is, is has been killed uh, then we want to want to remove it. Uh, for now, we're just going to just remove it from the thing. But we, if later on, we might actually flesh it out a little bit, have like an animation. Let's see about that. So we're going to delete um, mob. And wait a minute, I just noticed something. Yeah, this is called mob. And these, this is also called mob. Let's let's not do that. Let's just call it MB. I, um, it's not. It's usually local variables will overwrite little lo global variables, um, but just in case, just just so there is no confusion whatsoever. Yeah. Making sure this works. Nope, it doesn't work. Oh yeah, the um, delete mob def. Okay, mm, still not something not, not okay. Oh zero. We killed the mob! Yay! <laughs> we killed the enemy. So yeah, that's 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 us killing enemies. We can now spawn some other enemies to kind of like have like a grand all grand all monster slaying adventure. So I don't know, uh, where are we spawning all those mobs? Let's spawn like here, uh, 110, 110, and then uh, there's gonna be one here, 311, 311, and there's gonna be one defending the chest here. It's gonna be 712. Oh no, <laughs> I spawned a lot of player characters. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I wanted. Oh, that's funny. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. Okay. Um, yeah, that's gonna be the mob, the slime. Yeah. Okay. Um, something I want to check: What happens if we if we give our mobs, our slimes, if we give them two health points? Just want to make sure that this also works. Yeah. So now I have to attack twice. Okay, this works. Good. Okay. Uh, here's the problem. There's a problem. <laughs> There's always a problem. So currently, um, when we attacking the, the the mob, the opposing mob, there is very little feedback. We m bump into it, but that doesn't look very satisfying. And this, you know, this should be the satisfying part of the game. This should be the part where we, you know, do cool th things with the mob, with the, with the monsters. So we want to now layer on at least two effects, or actually three effects. One is an obvious effect, sound effect. Not gonna do this today. Maybe uh, tomorrow. Uh, by next next episode, where we're gonna actually copy the sound effects from the mm, from the file I created. Mm, but I think there's another one that we need. Uh, is we want maybe the mob, the opposing mob, to flash, to kind of like uh, be bright for a second. 
Um, and then the third thing, and that's going to be more elaborate, is um, not going to sure, pro probably not going to do this in this episode. Not sure. Uh, we want a, a so-called floater to pop up. And or I call it a floater. And that's basically kind of like some text that appears over the map. And you might be familiar with this from other games where it's like you hit somebody and then like numbers are going up and that indicates how much damage you did. I think that's a really cool, very gamey kind of feedback that works very well for this kind of game, I think. So we want to kind of have like, you know, the, how much damage you did to kind of like float from, from the opponent when you hit them. Let's do these one after another. So first, I want to create a new property to our mob and you can see like this is starting to grow, right? Um, and we're going to put it uh, somewhere here among the animations uh, where we're going to we're going to call this flash and it's zero. And then here in the gameplay, um, no, not in the gameplay, in a drawing function, we're going to go if m dot flash is greater than zero, then m um, dot dot flash minus equals one again doing update stuff in a draw function but that's okay because it's kind of like visual stuff so that's oh that's that's not too bad and then um i'm probably want to be doing like a local color is 10 that's usually the color that we have but if there's a flash then we're going to switch the color to like white that's going to be seven ten is um it was yellow yeah and then we just pop in this color in, into our draw function. You remember, we actually had this thing, our draw sprite function actually already has this functionality. So this is like, like a very simple thing. Ah, it's not happening yet because we're not actually changing the flash. So let me see, in gameplay, when we're actually hitting the mob here, we're gonna go um, defm dot flash um, equals 15. For 15 frames, the mob will flash um, white. You can see that this is a bit of a more of a feedback now. You can actually see that this this mob was hit. Maybe 15 is a bit too much. Let's see how 10 looks. Yeah, maybe 10 is better a little bit. So it's kind of like more sudden. So this is a bit better now, but I think there's still some more. Oh, there's actually yet another feedback that we want to maybe add. Maybe add some screen shake because you're doing stuff. You know, there should be maybe more stuff happening. Um, so I could start the floater now, but this video is already getting a bit long here. So instead, I think what we might do at, at this moment is we're actually going to copy the sound effects that I use. I think these are going to be the, the two um, sound effects that we had previously. Let me open up Notepad Plus real quick. Good. So I'm going to actually go in here and these are going to be the next two sound effects here, these here. So it's kind of like one, two, three, four, five. And this is like the next ones. And we're gonna copy this out, out of the prototype. And again, you can do this the same, not with a prototype, but actually with a with a file that I post at the end of this video. And it's gonna plop them in here, bam. I'm gonna save this. Load pork. Still there. And, but now we have a sound effect associated, or at least a sound effect that we can use here for that. So there's two sound effects that I have, one for hitting enemy mobs and one for being hit by an enemy mob. Oops, that's not the one. So this is for getting hit. And this is for hitting the mobs. There's a bit of a difference here where this just sounds like bashing on, on things, just hitting something. Right, that should be like you hit something. But this has like this whip, that like as if your character is shouting out. And this is like, I think very important because you should be able to understand what is happening just by hearing stuff. You don't have to like actually watch these like fast animation play. Just by hearing this, you realize, oh no, I did something wrong. You know, you have like this, this, um, this you, the player should associate this sound effect with uh, something bad happened. Um, so f five, seven and five, eight. Um, so let's put it in gameplay and be like, okay, so if, Hmm. We could put it put it in here, but we also could have put it in here. We want to put it here actually, because here we can we don't have to actually check if this is the player mob or not. We just know that we are hitting an opponent mob. So we're gonna go SFX. Uh, I already forgot five eight. 
That sounds, that feels a lot better now. Okay. You know what? I'm feeling lucky. Let's try to get, oh, wait a minute. I'm, I didn't switch over. You saw some of my code there. <laughs> Other code. I'm feeling lucky. Let's try to get the floaters going as well. Okay, so floaters. Let's try this. So um, I'm gonna create a new um, new empty array code float. Just an easy thing like this. And then here uh, UI. I think that's part of UI. I think we can call this UI. We're gonna call do a function called function add float. That's gonna be like what kind of text are we want? Do we want to show? Where do we want to show it? Uh, and what kind of color should this text have? That's my, these are my, my rules. And then all it does, it just adds a float to the uh, float array being like, okay, the tag, there's gonna be a text associated with it. Um, there's gonna be an X, let's, let's make this underscore so it's clear. And we can call this text. So it's kind of like also clear txt underscore txt, X equals underscore X, Y, equals underscore y and c equals underscore c just basically grabbing all of these values and putting it in the array and adding it to this thing now there's going to be now a second function that is going to be um basically um it's going to be like animating the floats so do floats and here is it's going to be also very simple we already did this a little bit so for we're gonna loop through all of the floats. So for f in all float uh, do. And now we want to kind of like um, make the floater move up is what I'm thinking. Now this kind of like begs the question, where is the floater going to? Um, I think it might be a good idea to make the, um, like when we're adding the floater here, to also give him a target. I think that might be a good idea, like a target Y value. So you can like start somewhere and you're going somewhere where you're going up, right? And I think in my prototype, I figured that 10 pixels is kind of like a good, uh, a good distance for the floater to float. So we're gonna go like target Y equals underscore Y minus 10. And then I think a timer would be good. So we're gonna say like timer equals zero. Um, so we're gonna count how many frames this floater exists. And if it exists too long, then we're gonna make it disappear. And then we're gonna go f dot y equals. Um, so now, yes, first of all, we're gonna add, we're gonna, you know, plus add one to the timer. So the timer counts. And then we're gonna go if f dot t, if it's greater than, and in my prototype, I figured out 70. So if it exists for 70 frames, it will disappear. And then in this case, we're gonna delete the floater. It's kind of like similar to the message box system where we have like a countdown timer, except this now it's, this, this time it's the other way around. We kind of count it up and if it reaches a certain age, you make it disappear. So now all that we wanna do is just wanna make it float up. So we're gonna use this like very famous, <laughs> very famous uh, equation where it's like, um, like th that's kind of like an equation that is used in a lot of like um, indie kind of tip situations where it's like you have a target and from that target you subtract uh, our current position and you divide it by 10 and that makes the floater go up. Uh, but go up, but then slow down, you know, we already had kind of like similar effects already a little bit. I think when the window was closing, that was kind of like a very similar situation. Um, yeah, and that's it. And now all that we need to do now is actually to draw the floater. So that's going to be here in our draw game function. And we're just going to go like, um, kind of like in the same way, we can actually copy this, this, this code. And we're going to loop through all of the floaters. Uh, and we want to do this after everything has been done we, because we, the floater should appear over everything else. And it also, that's not something we want to do always. That's something that just should happen in the game. So, you know, when like an end screen appears or something, we want the floaters to be disappear basically. So for uh, F in all, oh, actually I had it copied here. I'm gonna loop through all the floaters, do. I messed it up. Um, and then we're gonna use actually our beautiful um, outline print function, our tools, remember that? 
uh, this outline print function that prints the text but with an outline we're going to use that so the plotter is a bit better like more legible uh, um, um, oprint 8 f dot txt comma f dot x comma f dot y um, then the color f dot c and then the outline is going to be black so you can read the text clearly against um, against the um, uh, against all the sprites and the only thing that is left to do is actually do the floats this do floats function is update function we're going to add it to our update function and again that's something we're going to do always always so we're going to actually plop it down in our update function our actual update function here why um because um imagine we we got hit there's a floater coming from us like we got hit and then we go game over and then like a different screen appears and then maybe we didn't clear the float or something and we then we restart the game we want by this time when we start the game we want all the floaters to be gone already so that's why i want to always animate the floaters no matter what i don't have to like figure out when we are animating the floaters or not i want always the floaters to be animated okay um that should be it we actually want to actually do the floater now because that's something that we're not doing here so let's try to do this gameplay when we're hitting the mob we're gonna actually spawn a floater so this is means that we actually have to do a little bit of um, so i'm gonna just oh for for the future i'm gonna actually go we're gonna calculate the attack value or dmg the damage we're gonna calculate this dmg equals um attack and the attack value then we subtract the damage from the hp and then we're going to add the floater um add float then there's going to be a text uh, that's going to be uh, minus dot dot dmg so we know that like we lost some some health points um then we're going to go def m dot x times eight um def m dot y times eight the pixel coordinates of this monster that we are attacking um and then the color uh, let's go for 10 that's gonna be yellow let's just see how this looks some crazy things are, are bad there's some kind of brackets that we that we got wrong oh yeah there's a curly bracket missing isn't that the best Look how professional this looks. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. This looks this looks seriously like a like a role playing game now. Mm. Something that I did in prototype and I I'm not sure if I want to keep that. But I let's try it. Let's let's I think that this looks a little better when especially when the when the um, environment is super cramped is I want to uh, when we're adding the float I'm actually I actually using a different color there because this is damage this should be serious so I'm actually using nine here so it kind of like stands out a little bit more so it's kind of like you can read it a little bit more you could also try different colors here it's kind of like bad that we're using nine and not ten or seven maybe that would be also good maybe and the the, the white I want to use for something else um, you know, I'm I'm not married to it. So you you give me an opinion here because the the thing is like we're breaking our color scheme here, right? We're using color that is not in our four color palette that we used so far. Or like yeah, five or four colors. This kind of like adds another color to a color palette. But it's so rare that I and it's like such a good reason for it because you know that's that's like a very important, uh, very important uh, thing to to know about. That I'm, I'm like kind of like I, I can, I think I will, I will survive this. I think that's okay. So great, we did it. So we now have a system where we can attack monsters and we can kill the monsters. Uh, there's oh, by the way, there's one more thing. When you kill the monster, the monster is gone immediately. So that's something that we might think about. Um, actually, keeping the monster around for a while while it's dying. Right, so it's kind of like it stays there until you know it's at least it finished flashing, and then you know it it's, it's being removed. That's something we might actually change um, a little bit. 
um, there is um, there is a system that I have in, in mind that we can use here. But yeah, uh, so the game is shaping up. Uh, and again, if you want to use those sound effects here, the code for this um, this episode's um, game will be in the doobly-doo. And otherwise, uh, yeah, join our Discord. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.